Hi everyone, I am Kanika Gurk and I am a researcher and a machine learning enthusiast. I have hands-on experience with ML algorithms and data science algorithms along with Python. Now, text mining is one of the most critical ways of analyzing and processing unstructured data with forms nearly 80% of the world's data. Today, a majority of organizations and institutions gather and store massive amounts of data in data warehouses and cloud platforms. And this data continues to grow exponentially by every second as new data comes pouring in from multiple sources. As a result, it is becoming challenging for companies, for organizations to store, process and analyze these vast amount of data with traditional tools. So upskilling yourself with these techniques with Nokri Learning will help you overcome these challenges. Let's talk more about text mining. Now, uh, more formally, text mining is the process of extracting hidden priority, unidentified and significantly useful information from unstructured textual data. That hidden information can be internal insights, some patterns or relations, which can help convert text into numbers. So whenever, you know, we want to analyze any data, we want to have insights into it. We want to deep dive into it and to know that we want to fetch, we want to know the analytics on the uh, analytics part on that. And that make that text data to convert into numbers. So text mining incorporates and integrates the tools of information retrieval, data mining, machine learning, statistics, and computational linguistics. And hence it is nothing short of a multidisciplinary field. Text mining deals with natural lang language texts either stored in semi-structured or structured formats. Now, let us uh, look at the various text analysis techniques. The very first technique is the information retrieval. It refers to the process of extracting relevant and associated patterns based on a specific set of words. In this text mining technique, information retrieval system makes use of different algorithms to track, monitor user behaviors and discover relevant data accordingly. For example, Google and Yahoo search engines are the two most renowned information retrieval systems. Then the next text analysis technique is the information extraction. This is the most famous text mining technique. It refers to the process of extracting meaningful, meaningful information from vast chunks of the textual data. This text mining technique focuses on identifying the extraction of entities, attributes, and the relationships from the semi-structured on the unstructured data. Whatever information is extracted is then stored in a database for further access and retrieval. The efficacy and relevancy of the outcomes are checked and evaluated using various processes. Then we have categorization. This is one of the those text mining techniques that is a form of supervised learning wherein normal text are assigned to predefined set of topics depending upon their content. The best way to understand this is the way we uh, categorize emails into spam and non-spam folders. So what we are doing is we are filtering our emails depending upon the content of the email or maybe the address of the email into spam and non-spam folders. That is nothing but the categorization. So thus categorization or rather natural language processing is a process of gathering text documents and processing and analyzing them to uncover the right topics or indexes of each topic. The co-referencing method is commonly used as a part of NLP to extract relevant synonyms and abbreviations from the textual data. Today, NLP has become an automated process used in host of contexts ranging from personalized commercials delivery to spam filtering and categorizing web pages under hierarchical definitions and much more. You find the application for categorization into even the sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis is nothing but again the categorization of the text data into various sentiment classes. For example, the positive sentiment or the negative sentiment classes. Then the next text analysis technique we have is clustering. It is uh, again the most crucial text mining technique. It seeks to identify the 
uh, intrinsic structures in textual information and organize them into relevant subgroups of clusters for further analysis. A significant challenge in the clustering process is to form meaningful clusters from the unlabeled textual data without having any prior information on them. For example, if in front of your kid you put on, you know, various uh, fruits and you ask them to make clusters or make group, now what will they do? They'll analyze their physical appearance, their colors, their shapes, and they'll try to group them according to the properties they can see. Similarly, clustering uh, follows the same concept. So it is a standard text mining tool performed or worked with the unsupervised learning method that assist in data distribution or acts as a pre-processing step for further text mining algorithms running on detecting the clusters. The final text analysis technique is the summarization and which is uh, again a very important technique. Now suppose you have plethora of data and you want to gain some insights out of it and you want to have some, you know, uh, important information out of it, what you can do, you, you do not have time to study it all. So we want the automatic summarization. So it refers to the process of automatically generating a compressed version of a specific text that holds valuable information from the end user. The aim of this text mining technique is to browse through multiple text sources to craft summaries of text containing a considerable proportion of information in a concise format, keeping the overall meaning and intent of the original documents essentially the same. Text summarization integrates and combines the various methods that employ text categorization, like uh, decision trees, neural networks, uh, swarm intelligence, uh, and say regression models, everything. Now, we find its application in almost every field, let it be the health healthcare, clinical analysis, customer service, business intelligence, sentiment classes, uh, sentiment analysis. So basically text mining is nothing but analyzing the text to find out some crucial information and every business, everything is working upon the data, even the political governments, the political, uh, uh, even uh, the constitutions, in even every country they are using the data to to channelize their energies into the direction where they can grow. Let it be the businesses or uh, the healthcare centers, the education sector, everywhere. Now uh, let's move ahead and let's learn about some famous Python libraries for text mining. As you see in this tree, there are many libraries available for various types of text processing. Let's dive in and see the detailed structure. Now, uh, the very first library is uh, NLTK. This is a very famous library, especially for natural language processing tasks. NLTK is a leading platform for building Python programs to work with human language data. It provides easy to use interface to over like 50 corpora and lexical resources such as WordNet, Hindi WordNet, Sendi WordNet, along with a suite of text processing libraries for classification, tokenization, stemming, and almost all the natural language tasks. This library provides a practical introduction to a programming for language processing. NLTK has been called a wonderful tool for teaching and working in computational linguistics using Python. Now, uh, the major drawback that we have with NLTK that it is not supposed to be working for industrial purposes. It is uh, not equipped to be worked with the industry for the industrial purpose. Now, how do we use it? As we can see here, we just have to import NLTK in the Python. And suppose I fetch, uh, I provide a sentence uh, at eight o'clock on Thursday morning, Arthur didn't feel very good. So what I want to do is I want to have tokens out of this sentence. So what I have to do is I just have to use the word tokenize using NLTK and the sentence would get converted do tokens. So we will get the tokens out of this sentence. Similarly, we can use NLTK for POS tagging. That means part of C speech tagging. And we can just see in the output that uh, we uh, all the words that all the tokens have been assigned part of speech tags. 
now we uh, the next library we are going to learn about is spacey it's a library for advanced natural language processing tasks in python and so combination made with python and cython which comes with a number of interesting features now spacey comes with a pre-trained statistical models and word vector uh, vectors and currently supports tokenization of over 49 languages it features state of art speed convolutional neural networks model for tagging parsing and named entity recognition and easy deep learning integration this is one of the very famous library if you want to work with deep learning techniques the most promising feature this library offers is the working with vectors uh, like word to vec and doc to vec and if you want you can use them in a very simple manner using this library it is very simple to use as shown in uh, the snippet here uh, here you can just import spacey again in the python and you can just load the library or uh, then you just have to create an object nlp object and then you can perform the various nlp tasks or over the nlp object that you have created now moving on to the next library uh, text blog it is uh, it is very helpful for beginners and it is a python library for processing textual data it provides a simple avi for api for diving into common natural language processing tasks such as sentiment analysis part of speech tagging noun phrase extraction uh, text classification translation even the word net integration parsing word inflection and it adds new models and languages through extensions also the biggest advantage it offers is that the uh, it is powered uh, by google translate so the language translation and detection is really at par now if you can see in this example uh, we can use text blob by importing text blob and we are just fetching uh, we are just providing a uh, natural language text. I am reading a blog post on Nokri learning and I'm loving it. What I want is I want tags, the POS tags. So I just have to use uh, tags and it will give the output and with all the tags associated with each and every word. Now, if I just want to, you know, uh, extract the noun phrases out of this text, I will just use dot noun phrases and it will give us the output of the word list, which is nothing but the noun phrases appearing in this sentence. So there are there were two noun uh, noun phrases here. First was the blog post and the second one was the knockery learning and both we got in the output. Now the next library is Gensim. Again, it's an open source NLP library designed for uh, document exploration. It is a, a library for topic modeling, document indexing, similarity retrieval with large corpora. Target audience is basically the NLP and the information retrieval community. The features of this library include such as all the algorithms are memory independent with respect to the corpus size. It has efficient multi-core implementation of the popular algorithms, distributed computing, etc. It is really good if you want to run LDA or you know uh, latent semantic analysis. Then Gensim is your solution. So Gensim basically supports these uh, what we say is uh, unsupervised text modules, and it is not suitable only. Uh, it is not suitable only for the supervised text modules. So as you can see in the example, we have uh, the usage of the Gensim. From the Gensim, we can even import the corporas. It has various corporas available with it. So what we are doing is we are just importing the dictionary, a tokenized dictionary, and it will output you with the unique tokens. Okay. Next library is the core NLP. It is basically proposed by Stanford. It is a multi-purpose tool for text analysis, uh, which supports conversational inter interfaces, especially for the chatbots. Now it provides a set of human technology, uh, human language technology tools also. The goal is to make very easy to apply a bunch of linguistic analysis tools uh, to a piece of text. Now, it integrates many of the NLP tools uh, created by the Stanford's itself, including the POS tagger, name entity recognition, uh, the 
pars uh, the parser the core reference resolution system sentiment analysis bootstrap pattern learning and what not and almost all the tools that are created by these standards the tools uh, variously use rule based and the probabilistic machine learning and deep learning components the biggest advantage it offers is that it is scalable if you want to use it for the industrial purposes for business purposes this is your solution and but of course uh, along with pros there is a con that it is slow when it is compared to the spacey and now that depends upon our utility for example i want to you know i have this text the movie was actually uh, neither that funny nor super witty the movie was mai now i want to annotate this text and i want to know whether the sentiments in the sentences are positive or negative what i am doing is i am just using it and uh, i am just simply uh, giving it to the annotate and providing some properties and all and finally i am getting just the answer so zero here indicates the very first sentence the very first sentence the movie was actually neither that funny nor super witty that is the first sen uh, first sentence it has been assigned as a zero val uh, zero a uh, marking and then sentiment 1 is given that means it has been assigned as a negative sentiment where in the second sentence uh, the movie was mai the sentiment is neutral okay so this is how core and lp works now moving on to the next library now this is really a very famous library among the machine learning fraternity because uh, it offers many machine learning supervised and unsupervised machine learning algorithms it offers various algorithms so it is a common open source nlp library among data scientists due to its excellent documentation i mean whenever you want to you know you got confused in something you have documentation available for everything you can just go there onto the scikit learn site and find out your uh, a solution to your problem so in addition uh, scikit learn offers intuitive class methods and provides numerous algorithms to build machine learning models it also helps in various data sets for your direct processing however scikit uh, does not provide you with the neural networks for text processing but again it is very useful because if you want to you know pro perform the text processing as well as you want to apply the machine learning algorithms over them or you want the machines to learn out of it this is your solution these are very easy to uh, learn again uh, you can see in the code snippet here that uh, you can just import data set from the sk learn and uh, here we are uh, importing the news data we can just train the train our model using this data or we can just you know what we can do is we can have the uh, we can uh, create count vectorization or we can transform the data we can just you know perform any kind of machine learning thing we want on this data using scikit learn the next library we have is uh, py nlpi it's a python library for nlp it contains modules for both standard and less common nlp tasks now this is very specific of it that it uh, features an extensive library for uh, working with the xml formats specially made for the linguistic annotations it uh, also use case ranges from the basic functions like extracting extracting uh, ngrams and frequency lists to building simple language models also it comes with an entire library for working with the linguistic annotation tasks it it can work with both python 2.7 and python 3 the con it has is that it has a limited documentation and sometimes if we are stuck we could not get the solutions so again here in the code it is given how we can use it we can just create the tokens and suppose if i want to create an ngram with the the window 3 we can see in the output we got the uh ngrams or say the trigrams from the text we have then we have uh, the pattern library pattern is a uh text processing web mining natural language processing machine learning uh network analysis tool for python 
It offers all such things. It comes with a host, a host of tools for data mining, uh, uh, for uh, natural language processing, machine learning, and network analysis by graph centrality and visualization. This is something certain to this uh, pattern library that we have not seen in any other library. Pattern can be a powerful tool both for scientific and the non-scientific community. It has simple and straightforward syntax. And uh, it, you know, it's the function names and the parameters are chosen in such a way uh, that the commands are self-explanatory. While pattern is highly valuable learning environment for students, it serves as a rapid development framework for the web developer <coughs> also. Now, uh, as we can see in here from uh, pattern, we have imported parse and pprint and we can just see that what we have done is here, I, I just have passed the whole sentence and we have created the lemmas and the tags, chunks, everything from that sentence, just using a single statement. So it is really a very powerful library. <clears throat> then finally, we have uh, the last library called the Polyglot. It is the library which is based on the NumPy. It is a natural language pipeline, which, you know, supports massive multilingual applications. <clears throat> if we want to work together with the text which has multiple languages, this is your solution. The features include tokenization, language detection, named entity recognition, part of speech tagging, sentiment analysis, and word embeddings. It supports large number of languages. That is their uh, its uh, advantage. And the Disadvantage is that it has a very weak community support. Now, somehow, if you get stuck, you might not get the support you want or you want to have it from the community. Now, if you want to use uh, Polyglot, you see here what I have done is uh, we just have given it <clears throat> the text in Spanish and we ask the detector to detect the language. And if you can see that it has detected it correctly into the Spanish with the confidence level as 98.0. Okay, so this is how Polyglot will work. <clears throat> now, finally, these are some course recommendations. You can find these courses on uh, Nokri Learning Platform where you can learn more about text mining and its various libraries in Python. These courses are beautifully uh, curated by Stanford and Harvard University, and you will be able to gain through them. Uh, this is all for this session. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe Nokri Learning channel for more such content. Thank you.